All right, everyone. Welcome to Gundam Explained, uh, the Gundam Explained podcast. This is episode seven. So, wow, seven episodes I've done. A uh, little pat on the back that I've been uh, keeping this up, being consistent. I'm happy about it. Hopefully, you are too. Um, but yeah, just real quick, uh, the Gundam Explained podcast is on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe. Um, if not, it's on Spotify, Apple Music, um, Google. Uh, podcasts, Amazon, Audible, um, wherever else actually you'd like it. There's an RSS feed for it. Uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll upload it wherever, you know, it's good to be. Um, also, feel free to, you know, subscribe and leave a comment. I've been forgetting to remind people, but I'm doing a contest. Or have I been forgetting to remind? Maybe I've been doing it too much. Um, contest. It's a giveaway for a Gumpla that... I was going to give it away at four, but I might change to 350 because I'm near that. And I feel like there's so much time between giveaways. It's it's a little more fun to do it more often, especially, you know, Gumpla aren't necessarily too expensive, but also it's hard to come by them. Um, has anyone else come across that where it seems that there is kind of a shortage of Gundam Gunpla in general? Um uh, a place near me that I would typically go to. It's a Hobby Town USA. H hasn't really been getting anything new in. Um, there's a comic book shop near me that has a good selection, but they are priced pretty high, and that could be because how they're having to source them, or maybe they just understand that they're hard to come across. I, I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah, just subscribe, leave a comment. Um, I'm hoping to do this giveaway soon. Um and then like start doing more and more. It's it's just fun doing that, really. Um, you know, and that reminds me too. And actually, let me get that loaded up. All right, yeah. In the Discord, we uh, I've had a, a few people um, share some of their gumpla. Uh, I just want to show that off real quick. So this is McNutty zero three six with the wing Gundam. Now, um, seeing the the Shar Zaku 2 back there, this makes me think this could be a master grade. Um, let's see, let's open original. Okay, there we go. Ah, nice. So, ooh, that's clean. R really like the look of that. You know, I don't have anything that's a uh, wing Gundam, but that, that looks cool. Definitely, uh... Yeah, no decals on this one, so yeah, it has that clean look to it, so that's definitely really cool. Um, and then we have Taco, or Taco, here with the shiny boy. Okay, so that could be, let's see, um, didn't say if it was a titanium finish version, which could be, or just that, the paint effect, but that it's a Sazabi, looks great. Um, that's one that I really wanted to build the real grade which I believe this is because um, I have the the new Gundam real great and this looks this looks great. Let's open original here. Oh, that uh, I wonder if I can. Hmm. I think this is good enough size here. Um, yeah, that that just looks great. Yeah, totally want to get a size B for myself uh, to build. Yeah, I love the look of that. Um, but yeah, that's just that's what's going on in the Discord. So feel free to join the Discord, um, post your Gumpla in the Gumpla section, and I'll feature them um, on the podcast because uh, it's just really cool to see what other people build. That helps inspire me to build more, and maybe others as well. Um, but yeah, let me see here for the beginning. Yeah, we got. Uh, what yeah, what I wanted to talk about. Okay, we got that all out of the way. So uh, let's dive into some of the content. So first of all, yeah, my birthday was actually recently, and um, I got some Gundam related things since some members of my family um seem to assume I'm obsessed with Gundam for some reason. Um, but one was hold on a second. One was a coloring book. So, you know, I, I like to be kind of an artsy person, and, um, you know, the coloring book looks cool. I'd like to put some, like, custom decals or weathering, almost like doing a uh, model kit. Um, so let's see if I get around to that. As much as I want to do that, uh, it, sitting around and thinking, okay, I'm going to color my coloring book is probably bottom of the list, but I'll get around to it eventually. 
another thing I got actually from the same family member is this badass hat. Look at that. Um, EFSF. And it says Earth Federation Space Force, so it kind of spells out the acronym. But RX-78-2 on it as well. Almost looks like an engineer uh, hat or something for that. Very cool. What if this is the um, the driver of that uh, little cargo bed from Mobile Suit Gundam? Would kind of wear this hat. Let's, let's get a look at that. Yeah. You know, I'm not much of a hat wearer, but um, there's a lot about this that's pretty cool, so... Well, and then other than that, there were some other things that I had ordered. For instance, the first Blu-ray for Double Zeta. Originally, I had Blu-ray, the second Blu-ray, only because really the the that show really shines during its second half. But I can't deny the first half has some good Gundam elements. And what I've been doing is, and I probably mentioned it before, I when I get the the Blu-rays. Um, or whatever the highest quality available is of the Gundam shows, I'll rip them and I put them on my own server so I can just stream them from wherever I want. And I use MB. That's a pretty good service for that. Um, uh, yeah, now, you know what? I'm going to dive more into Double Zeta eventually because I really like it. Um, it, it the, some of the issues people have with it, and I totally get it, is the cartoony moments. Like when you see Wile E. Coyote in uh, you know, Looney Tunes running off the cliff and then looking down and then looking up and then falling. That is kind those things happen sometimes, especially more in the first half. And so I think that for Gundam fans, that kind of removes you from the believability of it, or it takes you out of the scene. I remember with, if, if anyone watches Star Wars or is into Star Wars, when Star Wars Rebels, the CGI cartoon first came out, I didn't watch it initially, and then I watched the first episode, and it did a little bit of that. And I was like, nah, I'm not watching Rebels. Well, second season comes around, and then they just hype it all up. They make it a little more serious, a little darker, uh, add a lot more world building to it. So, and Double Zeta is that same thing. Um, it, it Double Zeta has a lot of world building that really is that connective tissue between early UC and late UC. Um, especially when it comes to new types and all that stuff, so... Okay, a couple of other things I happened to get. This one uh, was an awesome find. Um, I got a pretty good deal for it. It's the NZ666 Kshatriya. This is the Robot Spirits, and it's quite the beast of a figure. Uh, I probably won't be wielding it anymore during this podcast. I'll do a separate video on it, but it's got everything you would want from a Kshatriya. And sure, I'm, 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 I bet the high grade was fun to build, but just having an already built version even though it's like, what, three times the price? Uh, it just has everything. It's a quality build, and uh, it's just heavy. That's the thing. It comes with its own stand, but look out for a, a video on that. I'll be doing a review of the Robot Spirits Kshatriya. Also, something that just came in, something that I've had on pre-order for a long time, are the uh, Effect Part Set Part 2, or they just put second at the end here. So this has, and I don't know how much glare there might be for the video version, but just so many different effect parts for the robot spirits, just so as I have them displayed, I can add, you know, different effects. A lot of these seem to be m more geared to be used for the, the Stardust Memory robot spirits line, although really with the the uh, connection points, it probably can be used for a lot more, but we've got thrusters, we've got the rocket effects, uh, uh Gun effects, machine gun effects, also different types of beam energy effects, and also some like super um, uh, rocket or not rocket, but the booster effects. So it's it's got quite a bit here. I don't know if it's worth doing its own review of it. I might uh, have to do some sort of review where that's supplemental to it. I can't. I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? Should I do a separate video on just the effect parts? I, I don't know. Um, and I think that's really it for the Gundam-related things I got during the week. I actually, unrelated, got some Star Wars stuff. Some of the, you know, I collect the Vintage Collection line and some of the 50th anniversary Return of the Jedi, or, yeah, Return of the Jedi and A New Hope figures came out. But that's not what this podcast is about. Um, but it's just, yeah, hey, I like Star Wars. 
Um, let's see. What else? I, you know, I finished NT, so narrative, and I've already recorded the review video of that. That's actually going to go up Wednesday. So be sure to look for that, depending on when you're watching this podcast. The uh, NT review is up. Spoiler alert. I liked it, uh, especially a lot more than when I watched it the first time. Uh, I can't even believe I tried watching narrative when I got into Gundam when I didn't know anything else because that it was a mind F without knowing kind of the backstory and it helps it really 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 helps to have watched Unicorn and it really really helps to have watched Double Zeta which I'm doing a rewatch right now which is why I bought that part one disc as I'm finishing part two it's making me want to go through part one again I, I tell you Double Zeta gets a lot of hate but it is great wow that was that was a rhyme. Um, what else uh, Gundam related have I watched? I think that's really about it because I'm not just watching Gundam. My, my wife and I ha- have some shows we watch. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, so some of the latest videos. So what I've been doing another little thing, and let me know what you guys think about this. So I will take some segments from the podcast, actually with help from my wife doing some editing uh, of. Like when I did the deep dive of the mobile suit of the week, um, I decided to cut that and make that its own video. And then um, the section when in the last podcast when I was talking about the Hathaway movie because I watched it again, so I did kind of a re-review, I cut that, released that as well as its own video just so there's a way to quickly get to that and and watch it, I guess. Uh, let me know what you guys think. It's just a way for me to get some more content out there without killing myself. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, get into some of the, you know, I didn't really find too much interesting meme type stuff on the internet. I don't know if it's just this week I've been too busy to really scour the net for Gundam related stuff. Sometimes that's the case, but Gundam related stuff I did come across for one, for those of you that play Battle Operation 2 or don't, here's some news about it. I, I suggest if you're not playing Battle Operation 2 to play it, so... I've said it before, I'll say it again, it is a good game that in the West it's held back by it being, uh, you know, a free-to-play Sony-only, PlayStation-only title that is Gundam. People don't know, you know, what they're getting into. They might see Gundam anime, might be uh, not interested, and it's only because I was interested in Gundam that I decided to play it, and it is an excellent game. Uh, and, and when it comes to Gundam in general, I've tried as many as I could, even using emulators to play older Gundam games. Out of all of those, other than that one in the arcade in Japan that I haven't played, Gu- uh, Battle Operation 2 feels like you're in a mobile suit, even though it's third person. But it's clunky, it's methodic and slow, deliberate with the attacks. But for the new month, uh, at the beginning of every month, Thursday through Sunday, they have the GBO days, I think they call that. Yeah, GBO days. Um, and, and for this, they, they like can give you free stuff every day, so that's fun. And when I say free stuff, it's mobile suits, weapon parts, credits, etc. And they also, for their little lottery system, that's how you kind of gain mobile suits, they have the... Um, the banners. So for this week, uh, they have the Jetta. So the Jetta looks pretty interesting. Uh, looks like a Jagan almost. Um, and then I guess it shows drop rates for things. So that's the other thing about the mobile suits in this game is you're not always going to get exactly what you want. And there's drop rates rates for them. I've got the Sazabi. I don't have the new Gundam, which I want. Uh, but... You know, let me look up something here real quick. So, Gundam Jetta. So, look how it's spelled here. It's spelled a little different. I would even say the design is a little different, but I think that's on purpose. Uh, Actually, it's pretty close. This has that um, uh, Katoki. What's his name? Um. I bet I bet it even says it in here. So anyway, this is from Moon Gundam. So that has a lot of those, you know, post-Sentinel designs that look great. 
Uh, I think they'll have the designer. Oh, the mechanical designer? No, it doesn't have uh, his name. I could be wrong about that then. Oh, and this is from, okay, manga is moon, but novel is high streamer. And I've learned, because I was doing a little research, actually. High streamer was what Sharp's counterattack was originally going to be. Um, but they, I guess they asked for the movie, the anime, to be a little different. So then Tomino went back to write the novel as high streamer. Anyway, yeah, it's Jeddah, J-E-D-D-A-H, you know, between that and the name, or Jeddah, so that's interesting. So, they do have or Jeddah. I wonder if someone just added that in, log in to edit. Uh, I, I could probably click that and see the time frame, but regardless, I, I like that it's based on a Mark II. That's one of my favorite suits. So, Anyway, yeah, just some GBO2 news, really, if, if that's your thing. Um, yeah, I think the last podcast or one before I was showing the new water map they came out with, it's, it's incredible. All right, so here is the uh, premium Bandai page. For those that are unaware, it, Bandai has this uh, special website to sell items. I think a lot of it because it's stuff from Japan, it's hard to obtain, so they have this uh, kind of a U.S. site for that. And because there's been that, um, oh, what is it called? Kind of the Gundam Expo, online expo going on. They've been releasing uh, some items here. Uh, a lot of them seem to be re-releases that are in a, a fancy look. We have the clear color uh, new Gundam here. Uh, let's see what else they've got going on. They've got a unicorn. They've got a bear. Bear always looks cool. They've got the bust model of the RX 78 F 0 Okay, so this looks cool. They've got this, uh, what was that? I just lost it. They've got this Penelope here that, um, lost it again with the clear, so clear color. That looks fantastic. I, I, I can't really see myself, I don't even have the original high grade model, I can't see myself getting the clear one and building that as well, but that is still cool. They've got a titanium finish real grade crossbone, and that I've been tempting, I, the real grade crossbone is so awesome, and a titanium finish would just look great. Let's see, any of these other ones, uh, there was a few other things, oh that's cool, they've got little weapon kits here, oh I'm just realizing this, so that's interesting, so this on the left is what, and it's only 28, I might have to grab this. This on the left is what comes with the, the Mark II Master Grade, and on the right is the Zeta, and they attach to each other. That would, uh, that's a great, I just didn't realize that, that's a great sale on its own. Uh, so here's some others, here's another Crossbone Gundam, what's the difference? So that's real grade, 144 Crossbone Gundam, clear color. Oh, and the other one's titanium finish. Wow, that's just so much. With how hard it is to get a hold of some gunpla, I can't imagine getting these variants. Now that looks great. This uh, perfectibility destroy mode and the price is great too. Metallic uh, gross injection? Okay, I'll, we'll go with that. Uh, Sinanju uh, limit. Yeah, that looks great too. Yeah, they've got some really cool looking ones. Has anyone purchased any of these or plan to? Oh, is that a um, V? Yeah, V Gun Victory Gundam. Clear. That looks great. Ah, oh, the the Faz or Faz Faz. That looks great. There there was a couple I saw. Okay, so this is pretty cool. There's Robot Spirits because that's mainly what I collect. It's this Ghost Gundam. This is from Crossbone. I haven't got to the point where I'm going through Crossbone, but this looks fantastic. This looks like something I would grab, but with the price and with the other things I've been getting lately, I might have to pass, but look at that. Look at in the finish, and so when I was actually looking it up, what this uh, Gundam was, it kind of has that look anyway, this little uh, uh, titanium look. I mean, that thing looks sick. And to have it along the real grade... Uh, crossbone that I have and just have them sit on my shelf collecting dust seems like a great idea. <laughs> so there was another one and I was trying to look for it the other day and I couldn't find it. Oh, by the way, here's a B-Packs 
144. Uh, that's pretty cool, the narrative. I had the A, so here's a way to get B, and then I think C is a thing already. That's with the exterior uh, psycho frame. But one thing I was looking for and I could not find was I saw a Mark II that had a special finish on it. That must be gone or it must be somewhere else. There's pillows, if anyone's interested in pillows. Uh, but I think that's really it. Yeah, because this is some older stuff. Anyway, yeah, I don't know where that Mark II is unless they just don't have that listed anymore. Anyway, I haven't ordered anything. I don't know if I am. Maybe those... 1 100 scale catapult bases, even though I'm not really getting gunpla as much or even the 1 100, but ah, it's tempting. A anyone else getting anything? Uh, please uh, leave a comment. Let me know. All right. Okay, so here's another topic I wanted to touch on, and this is the cyber new type. Uh, so after getting into a lot of this early UC, especially once you get to Unicorn and Narrative, it's really about the new type phenomena. Like, I would say the prequels and the sequels of Star Wars are about four seizures. Am I always going to compare Star Wars and Gundam? Yes. No. Yes. But, uh, so the new type, again, is someone that, it doesn't always seem to be the case, but uh, during the time of there being space-born beings, Slowly over time, people are developing psychic abilities where they can kind of speak to others or feel emotion. Um, and and so I guess from that, the government wanted to leverage that in the military to then have these ace pilots pilot mobile suits. And I've done a video on that, actually, of wh what a new type is. And my part two, I want to cover new types or cyber new types. But just real quick, I wanted to touch on them here is so... A cyber new type is a new type created through artificial means. They have appeared in the universal century and the after war timeline. So this will be one of the first times I'm kind of talking a bit about another universe of Gundam. So what is the after war timeline? Oh, Gundam X. So after war, AW refers to one of the timelines in the Gundam anime meta series. So the after war period starts following the massive colony drops that brought an end to the seventh space war kill night. So very interesting how it seems to be similar to uh, Universal Century, but it kind of does its own thing. So let me know what you guys think of this uh, Gundam X after war, if it's worth diving into, because I guess it does kind of the cyber new type thing, but for the Universal Century's sake, in the Universal Century timeline, cyber new types receive various physical and mental enhancements, including organ transplants, biotechnological modifications, and chemicals that increase their reaction speed and radiation resistance. They are also subjected to extensive hypnotic conditioning in which their personalities and memories are manipulated to make them into more effective soldiers. However, this process has the unfortunate side effect of rendering the cyber new types mentally unstable with some even having personality disorders. Excuse me. That last word was disorders, if you didn't catch that. Um, in the afterwar timeline, the process that the process that turned normal humans into cyber new types were not described. However, it is known that cyber new types suffer from synapse syndrome, where the signals from the brain get confused and cause extreme pain that can be life-threatening. Okay. So when it comes to Universal Century, they talked about the conditioning that goes on. In while that is discussed in various Gundam, it's Unicorn that they specifically uh, expand on Puru, uh, the character from Double Zeta. Um, sometimes in English it's easy to pronounce it as Pool. Uh, there's the 12 clones, there was the new type, the clones were the cyber new types, um, and Marita Cruz was the 12th clone. And within Unicorn, you see where she is her own person. Then she gets reconditioned and then gets back to herself. And she goes through certain mental breaks during that. Very interesting. So here are some known cyber new types. So this is not the full list. So from it seems to start with Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, meaning... 
Unless it goes back in time, no. Uh, so I guess Mobile Suit Gundam, the original, didn't have the cyber new types yet. It was just new types. Unless there was something going on behind the scenes. At that point, it was just new types. So once we get into Zeta, we start seeing something like four Mirasame. Rosamia Badam and Gates Kappa. So we are seeing a start, especially with the Zeta Gundam, uh, they're cyber new types, but that attraction of the new type occurs. This is where Camille, Four, and Rosamia, they have these, these feelings. They're kind of connected to each other in some way, and it's because of the new type ability. And then uh, the Zeta Gundam Four story into a soldier, and that's Jill. Advance of Zeta, Rosa, Rose Weiss, Rose Weiss. I'll have to figure that out. That's just is another thing to pronounce. All right, from Double Zeta, Shara Soon, Master Mircello, uh, LPO Play. Uh, okay, so that's, oh, man, one of the hardest names, LPO Pull, or Pull. And, man, what, what did they do to American English people? And then there's the play two or pull or puru two. Ah, uh, let's see. And then uh, Glemi Toto's puru clone. So that's you know all the clones of the original puru. That's Marita Cruz and Unicorn. So yeah, Double Zeta really doubles down on the cyber new types. Let's see Shar's counterattack. We have Gaine Gus. Uh, let's see, and then Unicorn, Marita Cruz, yeah, Pluto 12, Full Frontal, yeah, because he's a clone of Char, so. And then in narrative, Zoltan Akinen, which is supposed to be a failed, or Akonin? No, he's supposed to be a failed clone of Char. And then that's pretty cool, and then F91, it's Corozo Rona, so, Rona. So this is the Darth Vader type that is in there, and... Cyber new type, huh? I never really dived into that much, but that would be another thing to look into. Uh, very cool kind of bad guy character from uh, F91, the Star Wars-centric Gundam. So, Anyway, that was just kind of a quick rundown of the cyber new types. I know there's there's really more we can look into, like the the different research facilities that both Neo Zeon and the Federation were using in order to uh, test or create the cyber new types in my Gundam narrative uh, video that will be coming out later. I kind of talk about what we see from the Earth Federation or the Titans specifically, I believe uh, it's specifically the Titans. Uh, but yeah, that'll be something to dive into more later. All right, mobile suit of the week. It's going to be the NZ666 Kshatriya. So Kshatriya, I was just looking that up. That has to do with the the ancient Hindi caste system. And the Kshatriya was the name of like the military system that would keep the peace. And then when there's peace, they'd govern that peace. Um, kind of a cool thing. I, I always think the names are really neat. Here's a close-up look. We've got that kind of Xeon single crest with the mono eye. Got the sleeves look because this is specifically the mobile suit deployed by the sleeves. Full frontal Zinnerman, those types. And then we've got the interesting wing thruster bits that, you know, at first I was attributing to the Cubley, but it could have really came from something else, and we'll get to that. Um, let's see. I like the name, the NZ, Neo Zeon, 666. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, Kshatriya, a.k.a. the Quad Wing, is a mobile suit featured in the novel and OVA series mobile suit Gundam Unicorn. The unit was piloted by Marita Cruz. So, television. Uh, so, you know, when we're looking at the, the Gundam uh, wiki, it, there's a lot of delineation between movies, uh, novels, manga, OVA, television. So, it's Gundam Build Fighters, which I'm not... I haven't really dived into. Um, I guess it's in that. It's also uh, episodes one and three in the OVA. Although technically there's a repaired version that's, that shows up later on. And in the manga, so it's the, the unicorn manga. 
and novel, and then in the games here. So, real quick, the profile. It was developed from the NZ000 Queen Monza. So let's take a look at that. All right, so yes, this looks like a Kshatriya, a version of it. Interesting. So let's see about this. Um, uh, it's featured in uh, Double Zeta. So it's piloted by uh, Pull 2 and Glemmy Toto. So I've been doing my rewatch. I'm actually on like 30 something. So I'm probably going to get to this soon. So far, Pull 2 has been in the, the Psycho Gundam 2, which is awesome. And then Glemmy. What was Glemmy in? Uh, I can't think off the top of my head, but so that's where it started, right? And so let's, uh, and this has the developed from. Ah, so it is developed from that Psycho Mark II. So they took some development from that as well as from the Cuble Mark II. Okay, so I can kind of see then where this is coming from. Uh, and then it, when we, we saw earlier what the Kiwi was developed from, so I don't need to go down that rabbit hole. I'd be doing that forever. So, okay, we can kind of see then with this. Um, okay, so this, yeah, the Mark II in the, in the Kiwi Mark II, or Kiwi. All right, so then... Um, All right, so technology and combat characteristics. The Kshatriya is a mobile suit based on the NZ-000 Queen Mansa used by the first Neo Zeon. The Kshatriya is much smaller than the Queen Mansa, but has similar, if not equal, firepower. This is accomplished by the four large shoulder binders, which are also the reason for the suit's nickname Quad Wing. Each of which mounts a pair of mega particle cannons, beam saber equipped sub arms, and six funnels. The main body of the Kshatriya also has four mega particle cannons, two machine uh, cannons, and two beam sabers that can also function as beam guns. Okay, interesting. It, it can also be fitted with optional beam Gatling guns on its forearms, although the Kshatriya lacks the mega particle deflection system seen on the NZ-000, an eye field barrier generator was installed in each of its binders instead. Its original Psychomu system was also replaced with a more effective Psycho frame. Although the Kshatriya is a massive mobile suit, it has fairly good mobility thanks to the thrusters mounted on the binders. And to take a quick look at that again, I guess these are uh, mega particle cannons uh, that are attached to it. And it talked about the beam sabers also doubling as Beam rifles or beam, uh, let's see, mega particle cannon, two machine gun cannons, and two beam sabers that can also function as beam guns. So I haven't really, uh, I'll have to look more into that probably from watching Unicorn or whatever. I, I guess I haven't really paid attention to that. Um, let's see. So, yeah, again, operator. So, built by Neo Zeon, uh, specifically for the sleeves. All right, let's talk about the armaments here, the beam sabers. Okay, the Kshatriya is armed with a total of six beam sabers for melee combat. Two are located in the forums to allow for quick uh, responses to close combat threats and can be used as beam guns when stored. Okay, while the remaining four are small beam sabers mounted in the subarms that are in the Kshatriya's binders. These four sabers are likely fallbacks to allow the Kshatriya to fight off multiple enemies or as a trump card to allow it to catch unsuspecting foes off guard. The generated beam blade is strong enough to cut through standard mobile suit armor with ease. Good to know. Machine cannon, a pair of rapid firing projectile weapons that are mounted in the chest between the mega particle cannons. They are used mostly to intercept small missiles. Very cool. Funnels. The Kshatriya is armed with 24 funnels for all range attacks. Each funnel uh, possesses a powerful beam gun that is capable of melting an enemy mobile suit's armor. Six are stored within each of the Kshatriya's four binders and are remotely controlled primarily through use of the Psycho Frame equipped 
cockpit. These funnels are used primarily to allow the Kshatriya to engage a large number of enemies at the same time or to overwhelm a powerful foe. However, they are shown to be vulnerable to the RX-0 Unicorn Gundam's NTD system. And we saw that in Unicorn. Mega Particle Cannon. The Kshatriya is armed with 12 Mega Particle Cannons. Four are mounted on the chest. They could be fired together to create a single very powerful beam or to fire a scattering beam in a manner similar to a shotgun. Two more of these cannons are mounted on each binder, allowing Kshatriya to fight off enemies from any direction. Beam Gatling gun used only in the novel. Okay. A pair of beam Gatling guns is attached to the right forearm. So that would look sick. Um, but the, yeah, the, the robot spirits figure doesn't have that. So special equipment and features. So a cycle frame cockpit. The cycle frame uh, is a technology that builds the brainwave to machine code translator known as Psychomu into the metal frame of the mobile suit. This allows a new type or cyber new type pilot to mentally connect with their mobile suit's operating system, similar to the biosensor, and directly issue commands via the pilot's brainwaves. So, kind of standard for those Psychomu or Psycho Frame based uh, mobile suits. So, sub arms. That's right, hidden in the binders, uh, the sub arms can be used to destroy an opposing mobile suit's arm simply by latching onto it or used to capture a mobile suit as shown by uh, its capture of the unicorn each subarm is equipped with a small beam saber interesting i feel generator located within each binder it produces a manofsky particle barrier around the mobile suit capable of deflecting incoming enemy beam weapon fire so the kshatriya just seems like a badass mobile suit and really the only thing that really stopped it was the new type destroyer systems, which is really what forces a a pilot to go beyond what they're capable of. So it's almost like that's what's required to fight it off, and I, I think that's cool. It really just shows how badass the Kshatriya is. So history, the Kshatriya used by remnants of Neo Zeon called the Sleeves and is Marita Cruz's personal unit. It is foreseen in combat against three Jagans during its trip to the Industrial 7 colony. After being alerted to Londo Bell forces near the colony, Marita Cruz uses the Kshatriya to attack the enemy mobile suits consisting of RGM 89D Jagans, RGZ 95 Rezels, and RGZ 95C Rezel commander types, which are awesome mobile suits. Let me just show this real quick. I love the look of, yeah, these suits from Unicorn. I was. Man, if they had some robot spirits of these, uh, I'd be all over that. Or if there is, and I don't know, let me know. Okay, in order to give Sub Subberoa, I've never said his first name, Subberoa, Subberoa, <laughs> Zinnerman, uh, which is the that kind of father figure from Marita, and their ship, the Garanciers, time to escape. Uh, the resulting battle ends up reaching the colony interior and results in severe civilian casualties. Despite being significantly outnumbered, the Kshatriya manages to destroy a majority of the mobile suits. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, Unicorn. Great fight scenes. All right, battle at Industrial 7. I don't know if we really need to go in that for now. Um, I guess because really this is the only time you really see the Kshatriya. After, after the Battle of Palau, the crew of the Nail or Argama began repairing the Kshatriya, thus becoming the NZ-666 Kshatriya Besserung. Okay, so that's why... Uh, let's see. Interesting. It has that kind of look because it was destroyed. Very cool. Interesting that they... So it still had the Psycho Frame cockpit, but they're not really talking about any other special armaments to it. Let's see what this picture is. Uh, this is when they are holding hands. Uh, when they're in, oh, I forget which hangar it was. Um, but yeah, anyway, Unicorn's worth watching anyway, just to see see it in action. So um, Anyway, so that's yeah, a little bit of history of the Kshatriya. Very cool looking mobile suit. You know, it's got the, again, the, the what they call binders. And it's what shoots out the funnels, which it has like, it's a 20 something of them. It's so fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah, everything about this is just sick. I love the, the sleeves look and they have that design with it. So yeah, very 
cool. Yeah, look at that there. With all the little uh, funnels out there. So, all right. I guess that was, yeah, mobile suit of the week. So, moving on. Let's look at some comments. So, from the last podcast, got Mo. Thank you for the quality content. Thank you very much. Uh, Will, another awesome podcast episode. Have you done any reviews on some of the early UC time on content pre Shurs Counterattack? I'd love to see some more lore about each uh, sides of the war with like Londo Bell or Gundam Origins. Keep up the great work. Yeah. And man, I wish I had the time to uh, just do them all. I, and I, I think I'm, I'm thinking of doing something where I will dive into some of the early stuff without having to go through the entire series first. Just get like here, uh, first couple episodes of Double Zeta, first couple episodes of Zeta, MSG, um, Origin. Uh, Origin would be great. And the way it's broken up, that would make more sense for me to do each each part. Oh, that, would, that would be a lot of work, though. But I think it would be worth it because that early UC stuff is really what I want to have covered here um, for sure. Um, yeah, thanks for that. So, Abraham Lincoln, uh, I guess I'll have to finally watch Narrative now, LOL. Also, Moon Gundam is currently ongoing. I think seven volumes are out, but only three have been translated. I love what I've read, though, and I'm really hoping for an adap adaptation when the manga is completed, maybe after the Hath Hathaway trilogy. Yeah, you know, just thinking right now when Hathaway uh, Hathaway's Flash came out back in the late 80s, like 89, and now we're in 2021 and we're getting the anime it's just really cool to think that there's so many other series that can be made from, yeah, it could be Moon, it could be, um, there's that Shars Deleted Affair, there seems to be a lot of other UC-based timeline stuff that they can easily make um, into, into shows, so hopefully they do that. And so, um, thanks for that. And then Robert, a longtime supporter, um, uh, just, you should see his comments. He's kind of like adds his own commentary, helps with pronunciations. Um, uh, NT is great to watch, although I've only, uh, I've only seen it all the way through once, by the way, any and all artists are welcome to go to the discord to check out the fan fiction known simply as AGX for privacy means to test their skills in creating any visual content from the story, which, yeah, again, I invite anyone when you're in the Discord, check out the fan fiction that's there. I thought it was pretty funny, and Robert and I were talking the other day. He was kind of showing more, uh, more of the stuff, like kind of explaining to me more of what his intentions were with some of it. And there's a lot of good meta, uh, meta uh, commentary in it. So, um, oh yeah, lots from Robert. Thanks, thanks, Robert. All right, this is from Dave. Do I need to watch? Uh, and this is when I was talking about Double Zeta. Do I need to watch it to understand Shars Counterattack? Everyone says this show is lighthearted and not dark like Zeta. I hate happy stuffs. So, what I was going to try to say is like, it, it, it's goofy in terms of that cartoony element I was talking about earlier, but it's still dark. And there's still dark things that happen and people die. And it's really just like any other Gundam except that sometimes the characters will do something goofy. And I like the element, how they have the Gundam team. They call themselves the Gundam team. And we got the Zeta, Double Zeta, Mark II, Hayaku uh, Shiki. Hayaku Shiki. Um, and so just these four cool mobile suits. I think it's just the four. Is there another one? That they're just going out there together to fight with. And I think that's where that maybe might make it seem a little lighthearted. But it's really just a cool, uh, just a cool element to it really it, it's totally worth watching and I, I i'm definitely gonna be doing a video about that so thanks dave okay so in dying i'm thinking of skipping this one it seems like a hassle to watch it's not dubbed it's long and i've heard it's not great so yeah there are some good points to that because it's not dubbed and i know it's hard like w w when i was younger especially in high school when i was getting into foreign films uh, i would only watch watch them with subtitles because i felt i had to hear the original language being spoken, and then I would read. But I've come to learn that a good dub helps you really get more engaged. But I think the subtitles are still good because then I'll watch it later to get a better understanding of what's going on. 
But I will say with Double Zeta, there is a lot of me looking down and reading what is going on. And I would rather just be able to stare at the art. So I get it. You know, in fact, there's some Gundam that doesn't have uh, a, a dub. And usually those are the ones that are least talked about. Uh, I think there's a correlation there. But I would also love if there's some community of people that want to do fan dubs of Gundam. I would love to lend my my voice to that. I love doing voice acting for fun. Um, uh, I, if, if that is a thing, someone let me know in the comments or something. Reach out to me, GundamExplain at gmail.com. I'd love to be involved in doing some, yeah, maybe some fan dubs to really help maybe get more people into watching things like Double Zeta or Victory Gundam, for instance, you know. Yeah, thanks and dying. All right, Majestic Demon, where can I read this online? Sounds amazing. That was the Gundam novel. So, yeah, I didn't see it anywhere to read it online, but it's easily accessible to buy online. Amazon, especially. It's not expensive, so it's kind of cool that it's easily accessible. So, this is with the Q-Blade. q, -Blade. q has a very unique design. It almost always looked like uh, it would belong in the Dunbine anime, and that's from Jay um, Sato. So, thank you, Jay. Um... Yeah, and, and I never heard of that. And then I uh, let me actually do a little search for those of you that haven't maybe seen that. Um, yeah, that actually looks cool. I was looking at this the other day. It does remind me of kind of a, yeah, there is that kind of Gundam look to it, especially Xeon. Uh, that'll be some other anime for me to watch, I guess. There's so, there's so much to watch. I kind of like, I kind of like that. Um, there's so much to watch. So thanks, Jay. All right, Abraham Lincoln, when I first watched Zeta, I thought this was such a strange design, and I was pretty surprised to learn it's one of the most popular mobile suits in Gundam. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a strange design. You know, I, I kind of enjoyed the pilot, Haman Karn, uh, after watching Zeta, and then, you know, with my little robot spirits and in my little cabinet, I have, like, the Zeta mobile suits together, and it's like, oh, I need the Cubelay. And really, it's one of my favorite robot spirits. Just handling it, 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 it makes sense more than I would think it does. And um, I think that's why it's good to like, uh, when I will build, build the models sometimes, it makes me appreciate the design a lot more. Yeah, I think building or handling the, the action figures help you appreciate it. You know? Yeah, so thanks, Abraham. And the Robert, uh, again, let's see. Um, oh yeah, the, uh, maybe make the Swise Ginner look a little bit like the q with characteristics of the camphor and the ability to load out like the Strike. What do you think, my man? Yeah, the Strike is is definitely a, a cool one, even though I, I know that's from Seed and I haven't really dived into Seed, but I really need to do that. Uh, oh, and his mom says, uh, uh and, and he's an older guy, so it's not like he, you know, it's, a kid and his mom but no he's an older guy and mom says i'm viewer friendly and it's good that i'm considered viewer friendly because i have kids of my own and they're not super into gundam but if they were to you know get a little older and start watching this i would want them to uh, not be embarrassed other than the fact that their dad's talking about gundam on youtube but you know what i mean um gotta hand it to you great videos all around thanks robert Okay, so what MS is the silliest in medieval courts? Hint, Rumble Rawl. So that was, oh yeah, Goof. Okay, I did say Goof, but also Guy. I didn't know if he really meant Goof, but he really did. So that's kind of a funny little little joke. Oh yeah, first is correct. So he did answer me. Thanks. Thanks, man. Um, also, which MS is used three times to make an ominous sound? Dum dum dum. Ah, I get it. That that's pretty good. <laughs> Did not think about that. All right, this is from the Over the Rainbow. So this yeah, the last episode of Unicorns. So Santo Bell. Loved all the callbacks to older shows in the uh, sleeves, units, and weaponry. One thing that really got me with Unicorn and NT was the soundtrack. They spend some serious thought into the sounds of these shows. Yeah, and as I commented, I didn't really comment or yeah make a comment about that in the uh, the videos but the soundtrack uh are really the soundtracks are great in all of gundam but uh, unicorn and nt it really steps it up uh it's great stuff um oh and then some more of uh robert's uh commentary 
censorship moment. Yeah, that was the scene where Marita seems like she's naked, but she's like a spirit form talking to Zinnerman. I thought that was funny. Um, okay, yeah, so this is some spoiler. Angelo doesn't kill himself. And so I was, so that's that scene where, yeah, it looks like Full Frontal is in front of Angelo, or Angelo sees a spirit of Full Frontal, like, talking to Menager. And I'm like, so how does this happen? It was a bit confusing to me. It's part of the credits, I think. Let me check. Okay, I found it. Unicorn, um, episode, let's see. What is this going to show? And there's that little, uh. Uh, oh, um, eyewear control thing he's doing. So I, I wonder, Robert, if if what he's saying is that was full frontal doing that. Interesting. Never really thought about that. Hmm. I'll have to. You know, I have to go back. Um, man, Robert is really into this stuff, as you can see. Um, yeah, fan service. Uh, I say that's. <laughs> Looks like something else, but no, I, I, when I, I guess coming from a non-anime background, to me, when fan service is just when, you know, a, a show or something is doing something to really uh, please the fans in terms of world building, story, callbacks, etc. Yeah, thanks, Robert. All right, Jay, again, yeah, Devao is a real city, and yeah, I thought it was funny seeing Jolibi on the anime. That's cool. I learned more about the world again, and Jolibi, the... Uh, a food chain. I would love to go travel there and try it out. Actually, um, love Alexandro's Senko uh, song at the end. Also, I'll help you get into more Gundam other than uh, and other mecha anime. Yeah, I, I'm down to check out some other mecha anime. Um, let's see, yeah, Robert. Some more comments. Thanks, Robert. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to read his commentary, feel free to yeah jump in on this. Yeah, these were the videos when I re-reviewed yeah, Hathaway. And then, um, let's see, uh, Jeremy uh, Lewis, I totally agree about the Bond comparison. Not the same thing with the opening credits. I have not read the novel, but rewatching it, uh, I have a theory that Gigi has something to do with the Mafti army and may have been on the plane trying to find out who was the real Mafti. I find it very interesting how she plays both sides and seems to be digging for something. Yeah. Um, I know that, yeah, in the Hathaway movie, they give excuses for Gigi's actions, sort of, but I almost feel like that's too in, on the nose, I think is what I'm saying, to where there's really something more to it, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, didn't they just figure out, it's like Son of Bright, the, so apparently the new, uh, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway movie, the second one that's gonna be coming out is called Son of Bright. Now, that was the Japanese uh announcement it, it, who knows if it might be translated a little differently for english but um all right so really you know that is it um you know everyone thanks for wa for watching or listening to the gunham explain podcast this is episode seven please like and subscribe if you're watching the video or just follow or subscribe to the podcast whether it's on spotify apple music all those things. If there's some place you want to be able to watch or listen to this and it's not there, just let me know. Just comment and I'll make it happen somehow. Um, but yeah, go ahead and join the Discord. Uh, um, send pictures of anything Gundam, any memorabilia you own. I'd like to show that stuff on the on the podcast. Um, also, be sure to comment uh, on the videos or subscribe if you haven't because I'll be doing that giveaway soon for the High Grade RX-78 to be on Global. Um, and then I'll quickly start giving away something else. Um, maybe even a couple things just to keep this stuff going. Cause it's pretty fun. But, um, anyway, thanks for, uh, listening, watching and, uh, talk to you guys later.